to episode 3 of the Joe Nada Anime Podcast. Today's big topic was fan service, inspired by Luna's post on Reddit. We also went over the shows we are currently watching, and Otto gave his quick thoughts on Hijemi no Ippo. Enjoy the show! Let's uh, talk about some shows we're watching now. So, uh, Joseph, you were watching, uh, I think, Tokyo Ghoul? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, I've heard uh, mixed reviews about that. What do you think about it so far? I'm not a huge fan of this season. Like, the first season, it was kind of cool. They just kind of hang out in a, in a coffee shop and not much happens. But, actually, I mean, that's not true. I mean, stuff happens. Like, there's some cool bad guy characters. And this season, there's, like, this big jailbreak. And it's just really... I, like, I, it's not well done. Like, you don't get to see, like, all of the cool characters. You don't get to see them fight. Like, they just kind of fast forward through their fights. And, like, some big stuff happens. And it doesn't really explain to you, like, wh- why it's happening. So, oh. I don't think this season has been quite as good. But, I kind of like the cop character. The main, the main cop character. His, and, like, I think he's good at uh, character design, so mm-hmm. I th- like a lot of characters are pretty fun, but just in if it's like the actual plot is just not, it's kind of tough to follow sometimes. Okay. So, so yeah, I guess it's kind of a letdown from the first season. I mean, that's been the case with quite a few shows recently, like we have Log Horizon. Uh, kind of went downhill. Psychopaths too. Most people say it's not as good as the first season. Yeah, was it quite as good as the first season? Psychopaths too. Yeah, and then even some people say, uh, "I'll know a zero second season is isn't as good." Even though I'm kind of on the fence there. I mean, the first and second season weren't amazing, but they're both entertaining, in my opinion. Um, and I think you said you were also watching. Uh, Assassination Classroom? Right, yeah. Assassination yeah. Classroom, you know, 10 out of 10. It's great. <laughs> it's uh, it's really funny. And, okay. like, the, the whole gimmick is good. Uh, you know, it's this guy that's going to blow up the Earth, and he's, but he's teaching the kids. And it's kind of like, you know, like the American, the classic American TV show where... You know, they learn a lesson after every episode, and all the kids, like, learn a lesson from the the, t- the octopus teacher that wants to destroy the Earth. They all learn a lesson from him, so it's just kind of, you know, it warms your heart type show. It's pretty fun. Okay, that's interesting. Like, I've seen uh, pictures from it, and I had no idea what it was really about, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of, it's a comedy, pretty much. Okay. I wasn't sure if they were just trying to be, like, a generic uh, action show or not, so... Right. Like, apparently, the you know, I'm not into manga, but apparently the manga is a huge hit nowadays. Oh, that's awesome. But (laughs) whoever, I don't know, Americans, I don't know who's a huge hit it with, but... Okay. Uh, Yeah, I really like the show. Okay. That's cool, and uh, were there any other shows you wanted to talk about today? Or are those to it? Yeah, pretty much it. Like, we were both watching Death Parade, and yep. I haven't been blown away so far, but I thought the last episode was pretty cool of Death Parade. Um, that was with the Twister game? The, yeah, the Twister yeah. game was fun. Yeah, that that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, probably the fun, one of the funner, more fun episodes so far. Yeah, and... Uh, Neither of them got past judgment, so I'm not really sure what uh, what's happening there. Yeah, they didn't wrap it up. Yeah. Oh no, I'm excited for this week. It's always a fun show, and it looks really pretty. So <laughs> it's solid. That's okay. Right. Yeah. So uh, let's go on to the shows I'm watching. So I'm going to talk about uh, a couple old shows because. Um, I'm watching the same new shows as a lot of other people. So, do Ra Ra still 10 out of 10. Um, I can't think of any way it could be improved. That's whatever. Junketsu no Maria, 
still the same. Uh, really good animation, really crisp. Uh, it's just really good. Surprisingly thought provoking, even though it's labeled as an etchy. Um, pretty good. JoJo is the same JoJo. Uh, people have been watching since 2012. It's funny. It has action. It's awesome. But the uh, shows I actually wanted to talk about were uh, Hajime no Ippo, the uh, boxing sports anime, and Legend of the Galactic Heroes, the space opera. All right, so the first show, Hajime no Ippo, is a boxing show about a high schooler who gets bullied a lot and um, not as a way to fight the bullies, but just as a way to get stronger. He ends up joining a boxing gym. Um, I'm only about 21 episodes in, um, maybe a couple more. I haven't really watched it in about a week, but I think the show is really well done. Um, almost every character is likable. Even the ones that they present as villains end up becoming likable later on. Um, the fights are extremely well done, and even though... For um, at least the first few fights, you kind of know the main character, Ippo, is going to win. There's still a good amount of tension, and you feel really satisfied when he actually does win, because he's new to the sport, and he's fighting against these other really talented boxers. So just watching how he figures out how to win, and just really struggles during the fight and when he's training makes every win feel really significant, which I think a lot of shows uh, just in general don't really do that good of a job. So that's one of the real strong points. The second uh, older show that I'm watching is Legend of the uh, Galactic Heroes. I'm 45 episodes in, and I'm just going to say it right now. This is probably one of my favorite shows. The characters are fantastic. The music is just completely amazing. It's just a ton of uh, pretty well-known classical pieces. The art, even though it's dated, um, does a really good job of portraying facial expressions, which is actually really important for a show like this. It's probably going to end up being one of my favorites when I'm done with the series. The art style just really fits it. You really get to see people's facial expressions and you can pretty much visually see on their face what they're thinking, even though it doesn't spell it out for you. Um, but the show is a thinking show. You can't just marathon like 20 or 30 episodes at a time. You actually have to sit down, watch a couple episodes, take a break maybe even for the whole day. Um, but it is really a fantastic show, in my opinion. Right. And I'd I mean, recommend uh, it to everyone. Space operas. It, it seems like it would be so much fun. Like, a good, you know, every army battle, it's in space. Seems like it's really... The concept of the show seems really fun. Yeah. And I think what they do are really good job of, or at least in my opinion, is showing the scales of the battle and just how huge they are. Because you see at the beginning of the battle, you'll see like the interior of one of the ships. And then you'll realize that that's like one room and the huge window they're looking out of is just like a tiny window of the ship. And then you see they're like squadrons of hundreds or tens of thousands of uh, ships that huge and then when one gets destroyed you're like dang that ship is like that ship is the size of an aircraft carrier and it just got shot down like this is an enormous battle so yeah it's an awesome show uh if you can deal with the art style i'd recommend it if you can't deal with the art style i'd also recommend it just deal with it it's a great show yeah, it's famous for, like, its uh, characters, right? Yeah. Um, the two main characters, um, 
Lowen Graham and Yang Wenli are definitely some of my favorite characters, um, especially Yang. He is... He's cool in a very different way. He's pretty calm, very smart. He's... I wouldn't call him badass, but he definitely is one of the coolest uh, anime characters. So I think that's about it for the shows we're currently watching. Let's move on to our main topic, which is fan service in anime. So, Joseph, what are your thoughts on fan service? Where do you think it's uh, most appropriate? Well, the other day... I was looking on Reddit, and uh, someone named uh, Lunar wrote a nice long essay about, he warned us, you know, don't kill me in fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been watching anime for 14 years. Uh, I'm 27 yeah. now. I'm thinking about having kids. Um, I couldn't watch Kill La Kill due to the fan service. It was so mm -hmm. irritating. Um, what else did he say? Yeah, that's and how the characters that. look too young and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much all I said. All right. Yeah. So, my opinion on this is, I just don't get it. I just don't get where he's coming from. Like, Kill or Kill. Did you watch Kill or Kill? I, I guess yeah. I discussed it pretty sure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you watched Kill or Kill. All right. A fan service is a big part of the show. Like, Ruka's, you know, uniform that she wears is like a, a essential part of the show. If, you yeah. can't watch it because of that, then you're not just not going to like the show. I mean, but always, like, my big thing, like, what shows were ruined by fan service? I just don't get this. Like, I guess in the comments, the first comment is about Kogis, Gias, and how, uh, of course, I forget oh, the yeah. character's name. Uh, the um, yeah, comment, I don't remember her name either, but yeah, there was, um, with what's her name? One of the the rebel girl, yeah, I think. Yeah, Kaylin. Kaylin wears a a bunny suit in the like the first episode or the second ep episode of the second season. And I mean, if you think that Rui Kogi says he was wearing a bunny suit, I mean, that's like a ridiculous opinion. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, um, how, how did they I... have Ru Rui Kogi that they had like a building fall? That they were in a building and they had it fall on someone and. I mean, that's kind of like a plot hole. Not that Kaylin is wearing a bunny suit. That's, like, kind of irrelevant to the, the enjoyment of Kogi's to me. Um, well, I'm actually kind of going to disagree with you there. Um, I think that, well, the fan service in Code Geass wasn't the biggest problem I had with it. There were definitely uh, a lot of other issues I had with it, which is why I gave it a pretty low score. But I thought that for a serious show, that is not where fan service doesn't really have a place. Just having like, oh, here's a girl in a bunny suit with boobs. Like that's, By that actually Kogis ends up detracting the from show. the quality I mean, of the show, in my I opinion. I think Kogis is a pretty good show, but I don't think it's like the most serious of shows. Um, I mean, I think it takes itself really seriously, though. Or at least that's what I got from the uh, first season. The second season was just kind of a clusterfuck, in my opinion. But I thought it was supposed to be taken. This is a problem I mean, like we read in the Go Jesus podcast. Like he's talking about shows that it's been a long time since I watched uh, Cookie, so it's hard to think of specifics. I I mean I I like Cookie, so I think it's a good show. Usually on Reddit, I argue, like, if people are like, oh my god, Code Geass, the greatest show I've ever seen. Oh, holy crap. I usually argue against that because that's kind of a ridiculous opinion. But I think it's fun, and I don't really think it takes itself too seriously. I mean, if you're really a serious show, would you have, like, so many obvious, uh, you know, Pizza Hut advertisements during your show? <laughs> and, su and stuff like that. So. Oh no. Well, I, then again, I also thought the uh, whole CC and pizza thing wasn't very good for the show either, so there's that too. I just, I thought it was a decent show. It just did a lot of things that I didn't like, I guess, is how I'll put it. 
and the fan service was one of them. Right. Yeah. Ever read uh, anime snobs like stuff? Mm-hmm. He has a. Uh, big... oh, yeah. Go ahead. All right. He has this big like the reason he doesn't like cookies. He's written it. Th- he's written this a couple times. Like his huge problem is the chess scenes and cookies. Like he has a huge problem with the chess scenes. Like he just thinks they don't account. Like the ob- I mean, all these chess scenes are there to do is the you know their character development for uh, the the loach. Lo- lo- yeah. There to make him look smart. But mm-hmm. I mean, I guess later he has a chess scene with the, one of the main uh, prote- I mean antagonists in the series. And it's more of a intense scene. I mean, but the yeah. first two chess scenes are just to make yeah, him just look... curb stomping people. Yeah, just to make him look smart. Okay. So like, that's not like a you can't have like a huge problem with the show because of two like silly chess scenes where like nothing happens. Like, yeah, that's just to make any sense. I mean, um, yeah, that's not really my problem with it either. But if the chess is the only part that uh, you're upset about, then. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, there's like more to complain, but uh back on the main topic of uh fan service. Another series I wanted to talk about was uh the Monogatari series. And yeah, that's that's a can of worms you just kind of have to em- or you have to open when you get to this topic. So, my opinion on that is I'm Honestly, not a huge fan of the show. However, I think that um, as far as shows with fan service go, that's probably the most appropriate show because it's all about um, a boy, well, growing up, becoming an adult, going through his late teens, and just kind of discovering his sexuality, uh, talking to all these young women and girls that he um, has some sort of relationship with. So I think in a show like that, where the relationships that a boy has with girls is the most important thing and actually the focus of the show, yeah, fan service is, I think it's even necessary, you could say. Sometimes it does go over the top with the toothbrush scene everybody's already seen, but just in general, I think it does a good job and the use of fan service is um, appropriate and necessary there. Right. I mean, I never watched that. But, I mean, that's like part of the harem genre, right? Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't watch a, a bunch of, like, etchy series or, you know... Yeah, I don't series. either. I don't, that's not what I typically watch. So if I mean if you're watching the Etchy or Harem series, then it's kind of what they're supposed to be, right? So you can't like complain about the ha- the fan service if you're watching the Etchy series. I don't. I mean, Mon- Monogatari is not supposed to be an Etchy series, all right? Um, that's debatable. It kind of is, in my opinion. Okay. I mean, so it's I mean, that's, I it's mean, like a character focused Etchy, I'd say. I mean, this guy brought up Kill a Kill, so I mean, Kill a Kill's not necessary in Etchy, but if he, so I don't know what he would, he thinks of Monogatari, but I mean, you can't complain about the fan, I mean, that's pretty much what you just said, right? You can't complain about the fan service in Monogatari, it's supposed to be that. And I think the same thing goes with uh, Kill the Kill, because I mean, you can say you don't like fan service, and that's completely valid, but I think that to get a certain point across, and I'm trying not to spoil uh, any of the themes in Kill the Kill because I know there are a few people who are still on the fence of uh, seeing the it now that the dub is out. That she she has, I guess people call it a stripper uniform. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a joke, pretty much. Like, yeah, you know. but <laughs> also the. Uh, Lack of uh, adequate clothing is also a theme in the show, and I think it's actually important. And it's not just that she's wearing um, a stripper outfit for the sake of wearing a stripper outfit. It's it actually kind of ties into the overall narrative and uh, some of the other scenes. Like, yes, 
sometimes it does go a little bit too far, like with the transformation scene. But, I mean, other than that, I think it's perfectly fine. And if you don't want to watch Kill a Kill because of the fan service, then I honestly think that you're making a good decision by skipping over it because the fan service, I think, is important to the show. I agree. Okay. And I was just it, looking through my my anime list of shows that the fan su- service ruined the show. Okay, I let's hear really, it. I can't really spot any. Like, none. Really? <laughs> like, I, I, I was on Reddit and someone was saying that the fan service ruined Elf and Lied. Of course, I made a great video on Elf and Lied, which I did include all the, the best fan service scenes, so make sure to watch that, everyone. But... <laughs> Elf and Lied wasn't, like, it's not like it's this great show that is ruined by, you know, Coda's scene where he goes, you want me to, you want me to touch your breast? <laughs> so, it's not, it wasn't like this gr- great show ready to come out. You know, it was always like this weird, like, sci-fi. Yeah, it was kind of edgy. Show. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, so I just... Th- I'm not aware of these shows that are ruined by fan service. Maybe I seem to watch more anime, which is possible. Yeah. But um, I yeah, know. I'm looking at my list right now, and I think the only show that I think was I can't even say ruined because I thought it was pretty bad, even without the fan service, and just harem elements was a comic kill. Right. Um. There were harem elements, there was a beach scene, a hot springs uh, episode, and, like, there was fan service there, and it was bad for the show, but the show was bad anyway, so, yeah, I don't think I can find a single show where uh, fan service really was the make or break. It seems that either a show does a good job with fan service, or it does a bad job, and the rest of the show sucks anyways. Right. So, yeah, then even uh, No Game, No Life, have you seen that? I saw, like, the first five episodes, and then I quit. Yeah, uh, I pretty much did the same thing, but I decided to just kind of man up and finish it. Um, I think the show's okay. Um... I, I wasn't I, like, offended by the show or anything, but I don't know why I quit. It was a long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a weird show. Um, something interesting that I that I actually wanted to talk about uh, for the show was I recently talked to uh, one of my friends, and she's actually in high school, and she recently saw the show. And I just wanted to hear a... Uh, a females, a woman's perspective on a show like that with a lot of random fan service and I was kind of surprised that she didn't really mind it at all. She was like she obviously knew it was there because it was in your face the whole time but I don't know she was just fine with it and I was kind of surprised to hear that from a woman from a young woman like her. So I think a lot of uh It just comes from, like, what age demographic you are. Because the guy in the Reddit thread said he's planning to have kids, so I guess when you're settling down um, with a family, you you obviously want to keep everything, like, PG, PG PG-13, and shows like Kill a Kill and No Game, No Life don't really do that. But then when you're in high school, college, maybe even into grad school, you're, you know, doing your own thing. Uh, you're mainly associ- uh, associating yourself with your friends and your classmates. So you're just kind of down for whatever everyone else is doing. And if everybody's watching uh, Kill a Kill, then you'll probably be fine with it too. I agree. Okay. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say on fan service. Um, I don't think it ruins shows. Um, the shows that people say it ruins were probably already bad in the first place. And 
um, I think that it actually has an important place in some shows. And while I think that there is maybe a little bit too much of it in some shows occasionally take it too far, um, I think there's actually some amount of value, not a lot of value, but like a non-zero amount of value that can be gained by having fan service. Oh, and I'll also want to add um, a show that I think could have been improved by having fan service was Clan Ad. And this is going to be really controversial because I know people love the show and think fan service would ruin it, but when I tried watching it, I was honestly bored out of my mind. And yeah, maybe if they had, it. you know, a couple of wardrobe malfunctions, I wouldn't have been so bored. I would have kept watching. Just yeah. putting it out there. The show I always say in those threads is uh, uh, Dead Man Wonder Wonderland. It yeah. has like this this warded with like huge like you know boobs, and they only show her like a couple times, so that was mm-hmm. disappointing. Yeah, see, I think that's about what we have for a uh, fan service, and I think that just about wraps up the podcast. Unless you had any uh, thing you wanted to say at the end. No, I think it was a great show this week. All right, we'll see you guys next week. This has been Sea Outer, and I'm Joe. And- And we're out. Bye, guys.